Look through your children's eyes, and you will discover the true magic of a forest. Find a forest near you and start exploring at discovertheforest.org. Brought to you by the United States Forest Service and the Ad Council. What grows in the forest? Our imagination and our family bonds. The forest is closer than you think. Find a forest near you at discovertheforest.org. Brought to you by the United States Forest Service and the Ad Council. We've all felt left out. And for people who move to this country, that feeling lasts more than a moment. We can change that. Learn how at belongingbeginswithus.org. Brought to you by the Ad Council. Thanks for listening to the best of the Odd Couple podcast. Be sure to catch us live every weekday from 7 p.m. to 10 p.m. Eastern, 4 to 7 Pacific on Fox Sports Radio. Find your local station for the Odd Couple at foxsportsradio.com or stream us live every day on the iHeartRadio app by searching FSR. You're listening to the best of the Odd Couple with Chris Broussard and Rob Parker. Let's get Finley on here. Break the news. Brian Finley. Here we go. There we go. Breaking news from Fox Sports. Like this was any surprise, guys. The MVP. Well, it was to Rob. <laughs> it wasn't really, Rob. Did you vote yeah, on this? I thought it was going to be a. Uh... No, I did not, Somebody Chris. Else. Not after he stumbled the last <laughs> 10 days of the season. But, but before that, when he had a chance to be a. a uh, Vlad Jr., a triple Vlad. crown winner, I thought that there would be a race. But obviously he faded at the end. But go ahead, Brian Finley. Break the news. Yeah, that he is Shohei Otani. He takes home the AL MVP award by unanimous decision. And as I send it back to you, Chris and Rob, what's it about the Angels? They win all these awards, but they can't win any games. No, nah, you're right. And um, it, 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 look, that's, that's what it's called? It's called pitching. Me. It's called pitching. And if you don't have pitching... It's going to be yeah, hard for you to win. It's hard to – you can't dominate. One player can't dominate baseball like they can basketball uh, and even to a lesser extent football. But go ahead, Rob. I, I know you want to say something. You want to show Shohei some love. No, of course. And you know what? When you look at uh, his season and what he was able to accomplish doing something we hadn't seen since Babe Ruth – I want to say this, Chris. I'm going to go a little off the beaten path. I'm going to sit you? here, at, yes, and I'm going to admit <laughs> that I was wrong. And not Did about you, him winning. Alex, save that drop. I you was wrong. about seven times a day. Seven and, times and, per show. <laughs> and not about Shohei Otani winning the MVP, because I knew he would once Vlad, and I said the only way he would is if Vlad had the triple crown. Okay, so I wasn't wrong about that. Even but then. what I was wrong about was that when a player comes from abroad, we've seen players, Ichiro, uh, Hideki Matsui, you know, who had good careers, Chris, right? Really good. Hideki won a World Series MVP with the Yankees in 2009. Godzilla hit those monster home runs at Yankee Stadium. People loved him. Uh, Ichiro was unbelievable with the Mariners, and then he bounced around at the end of his career a couple teams. He was tremendous, but... It isn't often that guys really live all the way up to their potential. Like when when uh, Otani got here, Chris, injuries, oh, you know, a flash in the pan, he pitched a few games, oh, he can't complete him. He looked okay in the beginning. You remember? If you remember, yeah. people were ripping on him. He couldn't touch the ball. Remember he had problems even hitting when he first came over and he had to make an adjustment. Right. So nobody really knew – how good he was going to be and whether all the clamor for him and all the talk about him, he'd ever fill those shoes and live up to it. But I'm here to say there's no doubt about it that the scouts were right. Everybody who saw him, uh, the angels who poured in all this money, Chris, you remember a lot of teams poured in a lot of money just for the right to sign him. He picked the angels and you know what? He lived up to it. He's something that, that, that uh, not often do players ever really reach their full potential. And not that his career is anything close from being over, but he did it. And a unanimous MVP in the American League says a lot about what Otani is, what he was, and what he will be moving forward. 
This dude is a bona fide star who has separated himself. I know other guys have won and had seasons with higher wars, maybe Chris, or you know, better wars in uh, baseball. Mike Trout was a unanimous MVP in 2013 to 2014, not that long ago, so it's not like right. it's never been done. But Otani lived up to the billing. And he was must-see TV if you got a chance to watch him. I know nights when he was pitching, I would make sure that I watched if he was on the mound because he pitched and I got to see him get three at-bats. So I'm going to say I was wrong that he lived up to all the hype and it doesn't normally happen. I was wrong. Well, (laughs) I'm going to take it a step further in your praise of Shohei. And I'm going to say this, Rob Parker. All things considered, this was the best individual season in Major League Baseball history. This is the equipment. Now, he didn't just hit and pitch. He did both at an extremely high level. He did both at a star level. He hit at a superstar level. 46 homers. What was that? Second in the league, Rob G. get, Get that. What, second what in the that? league to I thought was it was second two, in the league to to um, Vlad Jr. Didn't Vlad Jr. have more? I'm not sh- so second in the league to Vlad. Well, how many Vlad Jr. have? Forty seven. So 40, 46 homers for some context, Rob. You know how many seasons Hank Aaron, the home run king, next to Barry Bonds. How many seasons Hank Aaron had when he hit more than forty six home runs? I would say he never hit 50, so I say Hank Aaron hit uh, once. You're right. One Chris, season. It's, it's unbelievable. Where he had more than right. 46 I, home runs. So this guy hit 46 home runs. Barry Bonds only had four seasons where he hit more than 46. Everybody thinks that Barry Bonds hit like 60 home runs every year after the juice, you know, right. stuff. He didn't. He never he hit only, 50 other than the one Only year the one time, right. The right. 73, Chris, is the only time he ever hit over 50. So think of someone doing that and then at the same time pitching with going nine and two on the mound and having a 3.18 ERA. This is the equivalent of somebody in the NFL playing quarterback at the all pro level, all pro level, and then playing linebacker at a pro bowl level. So you're a superstar quarterback. I'd say he's a superstar hitter with 46 homers, bunch of RBI, and, and led the league in triples. And then I'd say he was a star level pitcher. So you're a superstar quarterback, star level linebacker. That would be the best thing we've ever seen. And so I'm saying it, Rob Parker, and I see, and, and some people say they didn't even make the playoffs. In baseball, it's different. When Barry Bonds never won a World Series, and he's the best thing I ever saw in baseball. And so baseball, one player just can't affect the game as much. So I, I'm saying it, Rob. This was the best individual season because he went both ways, so to speak, that we've ever seen. Not that there's anything wrong with that, but, you know, that's another story. <laughs> <laughs> Seinfeld that that reference for you young <laughs> that, That's a Seinfeld, right. <laughs> <laughs> Even Chris got that from Seinfeld. Very I remember good, seeing that. Remember I that, that episode, episode, right. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I, I, you know what? That's good hyperbole, Chris. It's hard for me to buy in. I get what he did. I think you're, you're giving him a little uh, more juice It's for, for his pitching. I think he's like a number Nine three starter. Two, three yeah, point one, yeah, Bob. But That's but top that's 20 not, ERA. That's a better but, ERA than Garrett Cole had this year. Yeah, but that, but that's not. But he didn't have enough innings. You know what I mean? Like, like Garrett. But he, like I you gotta, get it. He only had 130. But that, that's, that's you know that's, that ain't right. 50. No, I get it. But it's still like when you say that there, there, there's you know the other part of it. Like he's not an ace pitcher, and I'm not knocking him. I'm not. I don't want to be here and feel like I'm knocking him. He's not a. He's it not feels an ace like starter. You're he's not. No, he's not your number. <laughs> you don't be, think he, he could be an ace? He's not your number one starter. No, I don't. I don't, I don't believe that. I think that three point one, Rob. A two or three. Well, I I have to that's see him pitch more. That's a heck of an ERA. I have and, to and see again, him pitch more. And you know, one hundred thirty innings you could, is a legit. That's a 
Don't you think that's a legitimate sample size? One thirty. How, how many start? How many starts did he have? Well, he went nine and two. Uh, right. How many starts? I don't know Rob exactly G? how many. Can you look at the starts? I'll, I'll look it up. Because because a, a pitcher normally a starting pitcher Chris might make thirty five starts in a season. Right. That's what your your ace pitches thirty five times. What did he pitch? Twenty. Twenty one. I will we'll get it in. Yeah. A yeah. All right. I, I'm just. He started I don't 23 want... games. He started yeah, 23 okay. games. I'm just saying, 35 is like your your ace. And I'm not knocking him. I, I don't. I don't want to sound like that today on his day that he deserves. And all the people who he had a vote. more I do... innings than Jacob Degrom by far. That, well, we know that because Jacob <laughs> was hurt, like, Chris, and he didn't pitch we that love much. Jacob so... Degrom. Right. Uh. But but um. Yeah. It's it's an incredible season for him, and you see they already. They went out and got Syndergaard. You saw that, Chris, from the Mets. Yep, yep. So they That's understand with Trout coming back, healthy, Otani, they got to get pitching. So they might make a play. I'm, I'm going to say it right now. They might make a play for Max Scherzer. Just remember that. Like, like make a real – you know, he's they already should. in L.A. They he's should. already in L.A. Yeah. Move him down to Anaheim, right? Yeah. And pay him what he wants – Add to those guys you got. You got to have pitching. You can't waste Otani. You can't waste Trout. All right. So is it the best season ever or not? No, it's not. And what's better? Uh, Barry Bonds' is a year where he had an 11 war, and you could poo-poo it because of uh, all I know so is all his all stats. So now you're in the war. No, I'm I've just saying. I've never, ever heard you reference war before. No, but I'm saying it's just a barometer that the young kids use. <laughs> I, I would say that season anyway, walk like 225 times. Chris, you remember the year. Oh, it it's was, incredible. It was, he, batted never, three, yeah. he batted 350. Uh, he had uh, 73 home runs. He, he, he had 100, more than 100 RBIs, more 100 walk, uh, 200 walks. It was the most unbelievable season I'd ever seen. That, yeah, that's I, it was incredible. I'll give you that. It was the best year I've ever seen at the plate. And pe- many people, I mean, that's obviously, many people have had better seasons hitting the ball than Shohei right. and pitching than Shohei. Right. But the fact, Rob, that he did both, I mean, again, picture Aaron Rodgers being like, you know. Uh, a quarterback and a linebacker. Uh, Micah right. Parsons right. as a linebacker. I mean, sir, you know, like, how can that not be the best ever? Fox Sports Radio has the best sports talk lineup in the nation. Catch all of our shows at foxsportsradio.com. And within the iHeartRadio app, search FSR to listen live. Hey, it's Ben, host of The Fifth Hour with Ben Maller, along with my trusty sidekick, David Gascon. Would mean a lot to have you join us on our weekly auditory journey. You're asking, what in God's name is The Fifth Hour? I'll tell you, it's a spinoff of The Ben Maller Show, a cult hit overnights on FSR. Why should you listen? Picture, if you will, a world where we chat with captains of industry in media, sports, and more every week. Explore some amazing facts about human nature and more. Listen to The Fifth Hour with Ben Maller on the iHeartRadio app, Apple Podcast, or wherever you get your podcast. Look through your children's eyes to see the true magic of a forest. It's a storybook world for them. You look and see a tree. They see the wrinkled face of a wizard with arms outstretched to the sky. They see treasure and pebbles. They see a windy path that could lead to adventure. And they see you, their fearless guide through this fascinating world. Find a forest near you and start exploring at discovertheforest.org. Brought to you by the United States Forest Service and the Ad Council. Adoption of teens from foster care is a topic not enough people know about, and we're here to change that. I'm April Dinwiddie, host of the new podcast, Navigating Adoption, presented by Adopt US Kids. Each episode brings you compelling real life adoption stories told by the families that live them with commentary from experts. Visit adoptuskids.org slash podcast or subscribe to Navigating Adoption, presented by Adopt US Kids. Brought to you by the US Department of Health and Human Services Administration for Children and Families and the Ad Council. If I could be you. And you could be me. For just one hour. If you could find a way. To get inside. Each other's mind. Walk a mile in my shoes. Walk a mile in my shoes. Walk a mile in my shoes. shoes. We've all felt left out. And for some, that feeling lasts more than a moment. We can change that. Learn how at belongingbeginswithus.org. Brought to you by the Ad Council. Walk a mile in my shoes. You alluded 
into this with Darius Butler. I liked him, by the way. I think he's got a real future in this. I'm not even just saying that. I'm not trying to be – I think he's good. I, I, I just had a problem with uh, – so other people lie, so you don't care about it. I just – I thought well, that if was too – that's how he feels, though. I thought that was too flip. It, well, well, you could say that, but if you have a relative or somebody, I, I just don't – I don't buy into that. Just be honest. That's all I'm asking you. Just be well, honest. Well, everybody's not honest. Most I people know do that. lie. But that doesn't mean yeah, that doesn't mean that I saying. can't expect that when it's life and death mm-hmm. and it could affect my family. I want you to be honest. So well, I'm not going to buy no, into I that. I agree. I mean, I took Aaron Rodgers to task for being deceitful. So I hear where you're coming from. That's all I'm if, saying. If that's like, how he, if and, that's and what he wants to say. You can make your decision, Chris, which is fine. I don't have a problem with you making your decision. But if you're working in a bubble or you're working at home by yourself, you do whatever you want. I, we're going to get into this. I agree. With you. All I was saying is Darius Butler did a good job. And here you go, destroying him. I, just know, didn't, I didn't think I, he did it, a great it, it, job. No, and and my didn't. thing is, see, my thing is I'm not judging what he said necessarily because that's just his opinion. I'm judging that he had an opinion and that he backed it up. You know what I'm saying? So that's why I thought he was good. But I, I hear you because I agree with you. That the, just be honest. I got a close family friend, relative who's not vaccinated, and we he's honest about it. And we know, and so we got to deal with it accordingly. So you so act I'm accordingly, you that. right? That's right. what I'm saying, Chris. You your family acts accordingly. That's all, right? So, all right, that we brought this up because Antonio Brown, big story, uh, in the what was it in? It was in the Tampa Bay. Was it the Tampa Tribune? Tribu- the what, was it the Tribune, Rob G? Tampa Bay Times. All right. Tampa Bay Times. And um, it was about Antonio Brown. And it said his former chef, who has, in fairness, has a bone to pick with Antonio. So he says AB owes him $10,000. And so he sent Texas text messages he tried other ways with a- AB's lawyer and all that too, but at the end of the day, he got he was getting nowhere on getting his money stiffed. back. He got stiffed. So he got stiffed. Right. So he went to the newspaper and sent text messages to them where Antonio Brown's girlfriend, they he was text she was texting back and forth with his former chef about Antonio looking for fake COVID vaccination cards, so that he and he was willing to pay five hundred dollars for him. So that he could avoid going through the COVID protocols. Now, here's where, I mean, that's obviously bad, and we're gonna get in all that. Rob, the Tamp. Now, this guy couldn't get him the cards, so this guy says, "Yeah, he tried to get fake vaccination cards from me, or wanted me to get them for him. I couldn't get him." So, but he does say he saw a fake one that Antonio had that he used to fool the Buccaneers with. The Buccaneers have – Antonio Brown's lawyer, let me go there first, has come out and said, no, A.B. is vaccinated, and this is just gossip. Tabloid gossip was the term he used. And now the Buccaneers are doubling down and saying, yo, A.B. is vaccinated. Now, now A.B. was – did have COVID in the third week of the season. So – and he missed the game. So there's that. But, Rob G., read us the statement from the Buccaneers who are saying, look, A.B. is vaccinated. Well, Chris, he didn't just miss the game. He went through the whole 10-day quarantine, which is right, the standard would, for unvaccinated For non-vaccinated players. Right. 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 That, so. that don't even make sense if they're saying he's vaccinated. Well, because- but isn't everybody that's vaccinated didn't. No, but he had to go through the 10-day protocol, Chris. Those are for the players did like Did he Aaron go through Rogers. that protocol or did he just sit out? No, Rob, well, we, 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 we can't the, determine that because we, te- right. yeah, we weren't He there. could have been vaccinated and still have had to wait 10 days if he didn't pass, you know, have a couple right. negative well, he, tests. Well, here's the statement you asked for. Quote, after an extensive educational process conducted throughout our organization this past offseason, highlighting the benefits of the COVID-19 vaccines, we received completed vaccination cards from all Tampa Bay Buccaneer players and submitted the required information to the NFL through the established process in accordance with league policy. All vaccination cards were reviewed by Buccaneers personnel and no irregularities were observed. And, and I do want to mention this. Uh, I don't know if you people remember the NHL player, uh, Evander Kane from the San Jose Sharks. He came up with a fake vaccination card he was suspended 
uh, by the league for 21 games and had to give up wow. $1.68 million of his $7 million uh, salary. Wow. So they caught him. So he had a fake one, Chris, uh, with the San Jose Sharks, Evander Kane. So the NHL came down heavy on him. That's heavy. Yeah. Because 21 look, game th- suspension out of 82 that, games. That's brutal. having a fake card is worse than what Aaron Rodgers did. Yes. 100%. No doubt. But it ain't that much worse from going from no suspension to 21 games and missing out on what? $1.6 million, you said? Yeah, one point six. I would see. I thought million. Aaron Rodgers should have been suspended for a game. I, I'm not saying throw the book at him, but I think he should have been suspended for a game because he purposely flouted the rules. This is worse if a they didn't suspend Rodgers for a game. So if if a b if this is true, Rob, not that he just tried to get one. He tried whatever. He failed. But if he actually did get one and has been using a fake COVID vaccination card then I think there should be ramifications. I think he should be suspended. I do too. And Rob G., can you jump in? Isn't there some laws if you have a fake? If if you have It could a, be a felony, Rob. It's I a think. felony. Is it Rob G., am I, did I read it wrong? No, you are correct. It, Chris, it's a felony to get a fake document right. of that Up ilk. to five years in prison. Yeah, so this is not like a joke. That's why no, the no, NHL no, no, came no. down on this guy, Evander Kane. He's lucky Kane. in that regard. Yes, but I this is tough because we don't know if he's vaccinated or not. Um, but it is I, like I said, it's worse than what Aaron Rodgers did. And I, came I understand, down on Aaron why, Rodgers t- I understand why Tampa went with the story because they had the text messages from his phone. Or well, you know what I mean? The, the, right. The, so so that that's enough, Chris. To to oh yeah, that's enough to, to write a story. It's, it's a Would story you? that he was trying to get. Exactly. There's no whether doubt. he There's, ended up being vaccinated later or not. It's a story. I There's agree. No with no, no no doubt about it. Journalistically, I just wanted right. to bring that up in case people say, "Well, see, the Bucks said he was vaccinated. They shouldn't have run this story." No. If you have text messages from a player trying to obtain uh, that's a fake a vaccination, Absolutely. that's a story that he was it's trying like to if, skirt. It's it. like if you had proof that or even you know that a team like let's say the Lakers tried to trade Russell Westbrook for Ben Simmons or whoever if if, even if it didn't happen right just the fact and the trade deadline is passed right if you still know it it was that's still a story there's no doubt and it would create buzz but I'm with you you. yeah I, I I think this is worse if if it were to find out and obviously the NFL has to do its own investigation I know the Bucks don't want to feel like they got duped, you know, and they felt like whatever. They could always come back, Chris, and say, well, he showed us a card. We looked at it. We thought it was legit. You know, they have an out to say that well, we saw did, a card. Right. You know, we well, saw. Well, there should be a database. When I got back, I just got my booster again. Although I will say this. Yeah, when I went to, when I got my first shot, which was Johnson and Johnson, I think it was just water they put in my arm. But <laughs> no, but I got, I got my first one, which was water. J and J. I'm just joking. You know, everybody's ripping Johnson and Johnson. Look, right. it was fine for me. But anyway, I did that, and I yeah, it was pretty quick. I don't. There was no computerized. You know that I, I don't know that they put me in any database or anything like that. Well, you had to but sign. But when though, I went didn't back, you? my wife and I went back. Well, I did sign in. Yeah, uh, okay. you know I, uh, that was it. But we went and got our booster shots last Saturday, and they were on the computer and all that. So I'm assuming they put us in a database. Right. So is every state? I would think every state should be doing that. I have it in L.A. Like like they sent me on my phone. I got the, you know, my vaccination proof card. Of Chris, your va- so proof. Yeah, I got so my I go, card. Right. Yeah, when I go to, rest, you know, whatever. But but I had to sign something. There was a computer. They asked me questions. I mean, in Los Angeles, or at least California, it was pretty formal. And I don't know, Rob G., what about when, how did they respond? Did you, did they ask you questions uh, and put stuff in the computer? Because they did it for me. It wasn't a ton of questions, I don't think. Uh, you know, but you're talking about the address. Yeah, like just that. to identify. Like, you, know, you, you had to show your driver's yeah, license ID. as well. Proof of who you are. The bottom line is there should, I would think that there's a database that has whether or not Antonio Brown was vaccinated. Should, right? 
I mean, are we are we because these little cards would not be hard to duplicate. They're not watermarked, right? No, no, no they're just regular cards. I mean, I, it seems like it'd be easy to duplicate that. Well, so guys, quickly, there, there, be there had been there were most like by maybe about a month ago. There was a woman on Instagram who got arrested because she not only was she producing the fake cards, she had access through a pharmacy to input the 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 serial numbers that allowed take it to, other people's numbers. Yeah, to make it look like it was a legitimate card in the system. So if you if you have the money to buy a fake card, I'm assuming you can get it to a person that would put it in the system so it looks like it's real as well. Right. That's what they do when, when they bust Chris, the when they register the cars, the stolen cars at the DMV. Right. People are working there, and they give these people, like, thousands of dollars, and they and they put these stolen cars. They register them. You know what I mean? Like, they register right. them. So there's always some criminal activity or somebody who's willing to look the other way or take some money, and they're working a regular job, and they – feel they can get away with it. So we, we do know that. But if you're the NFL, you have to investigate it to find out exactly uh, where it is. So you think this is, this is worse, a fake card, compared to fudging the truth? It, it, so let me ask you this, Rod. If you were his teammate and you're, you, you're cool with him, whether you're great I, friends not, or not, you're cool, not cool with him. With you, you pissed? Yeah, yeah I'm you, not You're cool pissed at him. If I'm, I'm his teammate, I ain't pissed. I, I want you to be truthful to me. You don't know what my family situation is. You don't know about who's around me. You don't know. And and that's a breach of trust to fake something during a pandemic where thousands of people uh, have died, right? How many people have died? Uh, 700,000 or like in this country. Like so many people have died. Yeah, I, I wouldn't. I wouldn't be upset. I would be upset. I'd be like, dude, you crazy. That's that's ridiculous. But I wouldn't. Would I be pissed at him? Can't play with him. Get him off the team? No, I just wouldn't. Yeah, I, I did, mean, I, I just when know, people lie to me, I'm good dudes with them. in the locker room. You know, I just I, mean, I just it, treat it, you differently. It, 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 I treat you differently yeah. once I know you're a liar. I, I I will admit that. Once I know you're a liar, I'm I'm pretty good with you. I I know where you fit in my life. Well, that, not, that may I'm, be one thing, but am I ending? Yeah, I, I don't know. I just, like I said, I wouldn't, I wouldn't, no, I really I, wouldn't I, trip. I say you would say that, but what if he had a teammate and they, and, and something happened and they well, lost that, their grandmother that would be a or, or, if it or happened, child? Yeah, if, some, if something like okay, that then, happened then I don't think and you something would be all was right traceable and something was traceable to him, then it would really, yeah, it would change things. But I, I'm just being honest. Like I've been in situations, locker rooms, dudes do crazy stuff, and it's just like, man, you you nuts. Like, but it, am I am I hating on the dude? Like, well, oh, wouldn't terrible. you guys agree though that knowing Antonio Brown's history, if you didn't like him or you liked him before, right. this, is, this is like look the at last all the thing things the he's done. I mean, allegedly, right. and some of the things he's just done. Some that, of the that things are still pending that right. are being investigated. Right. Right. So if that so, if the if the stuff with the artist wasn't enough to make you not like him, I'm pretty sure this probably wouldn't matter. And, and the other story, the whole story about That's him not paying point. his chef friend. I, right. I mean, come on, dude. All stop of it. that. Yeah. What, what, I mean, what's like, wrong it's, yeah, it, it'd be hard. It might be is, hard but, to be friends with a dude like this. But I'm just saying, if I'm in the locker room. I'm not like get him out of the locker room. I hate him. But you I, know, I didn't that's say me. that. I said the way that I would deal with them. I didn't. I didn't say that he has. To no, I know. And I'm just saying the, the way I would deal with him. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Be sure to catch live editions of The Odd Couple with Chris Broussard and Rob Parker weekdays at 7 p.m. Eastern, 4 p.m. Pacific on Fox Sports Radio and the iHeartRadio app. And we're live here outside the Perez family home just waiting for the... And there they go. Almost on time this morning. Mom is coming out the front door strong with a double arm kid carry. Looks like dad has the bags. Daughter is bringing up the rear. Oh, but the diaper bag wasn't closed. Diapers and toys are everywhere. Ooh, but mom has just nailed the perfect car seat buckle for the toddler. And now the eldest daughter, who looks to be about 9 or 10, has secured herself in the booster seat. Dad zips the bag closed, and they're off. Ah, but looks like mom doesn't realize her coffee cup is still on the roof of the car. And there it goes. Oh, that's a shame. That mug was a fam favorite. Don't sweat the small stuff. Just nail the big stuff. Like making sure your kids are buckled correctly in the right seat for their age and size. Learn more at NHTSA.gov slash the right seat. Visit NHTSA.gov slash the right seat. Brought to you by NHTSA and the Ad Council. 
It's time for another iconic conversation on Questlove Supreme. Get ready for a Will Smith combo like no other, where we talk the music and we speak about all the things that produce the icon we see today. Listen to Questlove Supreme on the iHeartRadio app or wherever you get your podcasts. What grows in the forest? Trees? Sure. Know what else grows in the forest? Our imagination, our sense of wonder, and our family bonds grow too. Because when we disconnect from this and connect with this, we reconnect with each other. The forest is closer than you think. Find a forest near you and start exploring at discovertheforest.org. Brought to you by the United States Forest Service and the Ad Council. Can you get closer to the mic, please? Oh, wow. Okay. (laughs) Speaking to the mic. Wow. Of the eight highest rated games in the NBA this season, Steph Curry and the Warriors were playing in. Now, Rob G., who was afraid to get on the mic and say it, thinks that that means Steph Curry is now the face of the NBA. And I will tell you this. Steph Curry is more fun to watch than LeBron James. Steph Curry is a hoot to watch. I mean, it's it's just really exciting watching him play. And it's really exciting watching the Warriors play. So I understand that, but I still think LeBron James is the face of the NBA. I still think when people think of today's NBA, he is the first player they think of. He's the most recognizable player. Uh, I just think he's still clearly the face of the league, even as Steph may be, is, in my opinion, far more fun to watch on television. Rob G., how many... Um, playoff games last year where Steph Curry and the Warriors have the highest rating. How many in the top playoff? Games? Well, they didn't make the playoffs. Oh, okay. How about but, two years ago? But if you, you want to play, three, if you want to well, play that game, <laughs> the uh, the playing game had higher ratings than anything until the second round. All right, I'm just asking. Well, of course, LeBron. Well, no, you're talking about the game against Memphis. No, that was a play-in with LeBron. No, LeBron, 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 LeBron and Steph. Yeah. Yep. Okay. LeBron yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, because people didn't know if to remember if the Lakers and, were going to get knocked out. Yeah, and, and, and you know. That was a huge, it had huge implications. Full disclosure, the number one game is LeBron versus Steph by almost, what is that, 25% higher than the next closest game? They're the two guys. They are. I mean, obviously, Giannis is arguably the best player in the league. You got Kevin Durant as well in that discussion. But they're the two, in my view, they're the two most popular NBA players. They're the two guys, LeBron and Steph, that casual fans, and not even casual fans, that Americans in general that may not even be into basketball know. Would you agree with that, Rob? Like, they know – you don't have to know, like, basketball. You know LeBron James. You know Steph Curry. I'm not so sure. I mean, you may have heard of Kevin Durant or Giannis, but I don't think you know of them like you know about LeBron and Steph. If you're just not even a basketball they've been around a long time. They've been on the the pro – Well, Durant's been around, I think, longer than Steph. Yeah, but I'm just saying, like, Steph's team went to five straight NBA championships. LeBron's been to ten or whatever it is. Uh, I just think that they've had a way more visible and high profile. Yeah, but that's their credit to them. It ain't like they yeah, were giving more say- visibility. No, they but I'm it. saying, but that that plays into it as far as like you were talking about the average Joe. They've played in the on the biggest stage more so than other people. That's all. Who you and think is the face players. of the league right now? I, I don't know. That's a good question. I, I you know what? I mean, probably by default, but. But I don't, LeBron has missed so much time. Is he really – is he still the face? Or? I still think he is. He's such a topic of discussion, you know, everywhere. And I, I get what you're saying because, obviously, the more he sits out, right? Like, you just got to move on at some point, right? But I still think at this point he's the face of the league. Who you got, Rob G? Steph. Really? Yep. I don't think it's Steph. I, I Again, think, I think he's the most fun to watch. Yeah, but. well, that, I think that's part of it. You know, I, you know, being the best player doesn't necessarily mean that you're the face of the league. You know? I don't and, think LeBron's and so, the best player anymore. And so, and so that's why, you know, KD, Giannis, I bring them a little bit lower. Um, 
I think LeBron, I think people are kind of worn out on LeBron, to be honest with you. And part of it is, you know, his game isn't as flashy as it used to be. Part of it is the 24 7. He's heard a lot. Yeah, he's heard a lot. 24 7 media cycle where he gets shoved down our throats, you know, and our show does it too sometimes, you know, because he is a. a, a Not a, as much as. No, other but shows. yeah, but he is a lightning rod, so people want to hear about him. Well, there you go. And so, but. And when, there, but I mean, just what you said just right, validates but, my point but the that thing he's the is, face of the league. When, when it comes to people. We wouldn't shove him down people's throats if he wasn't the face of the but, league. But it's not just because of him in basketball, it's because of the other things that he does. That's what people care more about with Bad LeBron. Movies. You know, it, it's his. It's his. Hey, hey, not hey, showing free, up. To free agency Paul decisions, opening. the way he manipulates trades and that kind right. of stuff. The way he but I agree with that. In terms of what people tune in to watch i think you know the numbers say people tune in to watch steph more than lebron well lebron's been hurt how many of those games he played has lebron two. been hurt he played in he two played, of them and one of them's the highest ranked and then yeah but the other one ranked. the other one wasn't the the second one was steph okay but it, it's such a small sample size you just i'm shocked that you as mr laker Trying to down all the You're so, I keep it you're real. so quick to take the title real. from LeBron. I'm a reporter. You're not keeping Chris. it real. Thank you. Thank you're not you keeping it real. <laughs> it's I'm November. A Say it it's again, Rob. I'm a reporter. <laughs> it's November. All right? Keep it locked, reporters. I right, couple. Adoption of teens from foster care is a topic not enough people know about, and we're here to change that. I'm April Dinwiddie, host of the new podcast, Navigating Adoption, presented by Adopt US Kids. Each episode brings you compelling real life adoption stories told by the families that live them with commentary from experts. Visit adoptuskids.org slash podcast or subscribe to Navigating Adoption, presented by Adopt US Kids. Brought to you by the US Department of Health and Human Services Administration for Children and Families and the Ad Council. What grows in the forest? Our imagination and our family bonds. The forest is closer than you think. Find a forest near you at discovertheforest.org. Brought to you by the United States Forest Service and the Ad Council. Look through your children's eyes and you will discover the true magic of a forest. Find a forest near you and start exploring at discovertheforest.org. Brought to you by the United States Forest Service and the Ad Council.